So we got some Nick Crowley, the darkest mm. kids TV show ever made. Really? Yeah. I actually like these videos because, well, he's the one that makes, um, you remember the schoolboy nine thing? Yeah, that little pedo dude. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually very weird. <laughs> so yeah, his videos have that kind of aesthetic that they're very, okay. they're very interesting. You know, they keep you like hooked on the video because of how I guess like disturbing it may be. For sure. I'm trying to remember what TV shows were dark. But like, as a kid, I don't think you really realize how dark the TV shows are because you're yeah. just watching them. But now you realize like, okay, nah, this 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 thing was wrapped up. I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, shout out mm -hmm. to Nick. Link to the original video down below. Go check it out. Sure. Let's get it. Flash warning. I'm about to get a seizure. Yeah, bro, you about to be done. <laughs> oh, nah, it really is eerie. Yeah. It's the winter of 1985. Uh -oh. A family living in a remote region of the Philippines receives a package at their door. You see, you hear that? Like his voice, the, the, yeah, the soundtrack, that... like everything is so well put together. Wait, hold on. You know, he kind of sounds like Daily Dose of Internet. Mm, yeah. Like creepier. I hear it in the voice, yeah. A family living in a remote region of the Philippines receives a package at their door, which contained a single VHS tape and a note stating that the contents were for the children of the house. Oh, that's the ring. And so that's the kids the ring were gathered tape. up one by one Whoa. and sat in front of the television where the tape began to play, introducing them to a brand new show called... Life with like Grandpa. Grandpa. Okay. The fuck? Life with Ah, oh, hell no. This was the experience for hundreds of kids across the world, made to watch a seemingly harmless puppet show about a grandpa and his family, with most of the young viewers loving it, gladly mm. watching this episode and the many others that would be sent later on, over and over again, blissfully unaware that what they were being shown would someday come to be known as one of the most disturbing rabbit holes in the history of children's media. Huh? This is the story of Life with Grandpa, the darkest kid show ever made. Nothing can harm you when Jesus is near. Dad, Doesn't sound. Can I persuade you to subscribe? Before we dive any further down this rabbit hole, I want to first thank today's video sponsor, oh. Saley. Throughout my life, I've taken countless trips to Canada. Yeah, this is definitely not daily dose, bro. So Sharing. She loved to play on the steep hills. What the? Life with Grandpa, won't you come along? What the? What? This is Life with Grandpa, a straight-to-VHS show made for children created sometime in the mid-80s. The program followed a family of humanoid puppets on their journey to teach the audience lessons loosely based on Christianity through the use of stories, skits, and songs, acting as a guide for children to live their best possible lives for Jesus. We're what continuing the? with some more lessons about prayer. Are you all ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Such <laughs> sweethearts. The show was set up in an episodic fashion, never following any main overarching storyline, and instead, each installment would be composed of a series of shorter segments, recounting past experiences oh. from this family, with an occasional musical number thrown in here and there. We don't have a sad God. We have a happy God who wants us to be happy too. Unsurprisingly, okay. the main character yeah, of the crew okay. was Grandpa, who acted as the show's host, often being the one to teach the episode's central messages not only to his on-screen family, Doesn't but to harmful. all the kids watching at home. But it's my kite! But wouldn't you like to pray that some poor little boy who doesn't have so many toys and blessings as you do will find your kite? Yes, Grandpa. As he was made to be a wise, <laughs> almost religious-like okay. figure, whose words were never questioned. Often seen by his side was his wife, Mother Maria. Though for as often as she's shown, she rarely has much to say. Yes, thank oh. the Lord for such a good, sweet boy. Typically only oh. chiming in when she's reiterating Grandpa's messages to the children. And of the children, there was Davida, Techi, and Davidito, with the latter being one of the show's okay. central figures, landing right next to or potentially even ahead of Grandpa in terms of screen time, as Davidito often got his own segments and told his own stories directly to the audience. Hello, children. Would you like to hear some exciting prayer adventures? Yes. This first story <coughs> happened when I was very small. And though it's never outright stated, it's clear that Davidito was put on a pedestal, with a child often getting special treatment and being showered in gifts, as mm. the family clearly seemed to favor him. Thank you, mm. Uncle mm. Al. It's called a kite. We want to give you a little surprise because you were such a good witness. This brand new tape recorder uh -oh. is for you. Thank you, Jesus. With there never being an explanation uh, as to why, oh. 
This is the core group of Life with Grandpa, with the only other reoccurring characters being Aunt Sarah and Uncle Elf, a couple that was often shown around the house helping look after the kids. And despite this looking like something pulled straight from the depths of the Uncanny Valley, the content within the show didn't really seem all that troublesome. In fact, it appeared fairly normal. This and not too unlike to many other low-budget religious shows of the time, so far, highlighting yeah. themes like obedience. Nothing short of right is right. Yes, so the right thing is... To obey. Sharing. Good morning, Davida. I have a surprise for you. Oh, can I see hmm. it? I would like to share my cars with you. Which ones do you like? And loving everyone. That's really sweet okay. of you, David. Thank you for that nice, generous present. What present? That nice kiss. A kiss makes a real beautiful <coughs> gift or present. Though mixed within these fairly standard teachings. Hey, let me tell you something. This <laughs> looks fine to me, bro. So far, so far, we didn't yeah. get to the messed up part or whatever it's gonna be, but yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously it's a religious show. There's yeah. puppets, so it's like you know, kid friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. the messaging seems fine. The topics seem fine. The singing mm -hmm. seems fine. Everyone, we chilling. Mm -hmm. So let's see how bad this could get. All right. Yeah. Things you'll find other moments that are far more unusual. Oh. Okay. Don't run down that gravel hill. <gasps> Davida! Um? Oh, Davida. <laughs> She's bleeding, and her cut is all covered with dirt. Oh. And I don't even have a tissue to wipe it with. Okay. I'll just have to lick it clean and spit out the dirt. What the f- the show featured a lot of strange underlying themes I mean, that seemed to have nothing to do with religion, you mean, I mean, or at least not I the mean, conventional. Could you, I could see this being passed on as co comedy, right? Comedy. I ain't laugh one bit. Like lighthearted, like uh, like she's she's maybe like a joke for the parents or something. Like they could see, be like, ha, ah, she's she's stupid, like licking a cut. You know what I'm saying? Nah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, mean, I mean that's how I took it. Like, sure, it, okay, that one example is weird, but now he's gonna get into like if it's happening constantly. Yeah, I could see how it could yeah. be weird. But like if that happened, I just be like, yo, huh? like you know, it's funny. I guess I don't know. But it, but, it, but it's like why lick it and spit out like it was. If it was like she got bit by a snake and she's poisoned, like she could just use her damn, her damn gown or whatever, wiped her forehead like on some shit. But like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I see exactly what you mean. But what? I'm just trying to give it the benefit of the doubt right now, cause like you know some shows would do that, like they'll do something weird and then they'll yeah. play like the laugh track in the back. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. So it could yeah. be like for comedic purposes, maybe. But okay, mm -hmm. let's see. The show featured a lot of strange underlying themes that seemed to have nothing to do with religion, or at least not the conventional beliefs of Christianity, with oh. one of the more obvious being its unprompted disdain for doctors. We'll have to really pray that there won't be a scar. Soon afterwards, there was no sign at all of the deep gash on Davida's forehead. Oh. Surely a doctor would have stitched it, but our God is See? still a God yeah. of miracles. Yeah, I'll pause here, I'll yeah, pause here, yeah. yeah. This is the thing I don't like. Like, yeah. some things you need medical profession to, you know, fix. You know what I'm saying? You can't just break a leg and like, you know what? God gonna fix my leg. No, you need to go see a doctor. I'm sorry to tell you, buddy. Exactly, <laughs> especially when it comes with health, obviously. Like, yeah, I feel yeah, like that's what bro. doctors are for. And yeah. we experienced that with the, uh, uh, surprisingly enough, with uh, Life is Strange. Life is Strange 2. Uh, you remember when we went to get oh, uh, yeah, Daniel yeah, 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 yeah. and then that yeah. little girl was sick, but she was yes. in the church and they were praying for her not to be sick. Whole time yeah. she was almost cooked. She almost died because of that, John. Yep. Yeah, bro. So yeah, I think this is when it goes from you know a religion to a cult following, and I think that's mm -hmm. bad. That's when it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's when it crosses the line. Sure. Praise. As well as its constant endorsement of spanking. Jesus what spanks the? us because he loves us and wants <laughs> us to obey and be good. What? <laughs> is he spanking them? Yeah. We're really sorry. So if the Lord should spank you a little bit or correct you, it's for your own good. It's because he loves you and wants you to be good and obey. And while these are certainly strange, mm -hmm. by far the most glaring indication that Life with Grandpa wasn't just your typical kid show came from the program's stance on women, with the first major example hmm. coming from a song made for the young girls watching it. Uh-oh. 
So do the dishes and clean the floor And God can show us something more I'm ready for any job at all Whether it's great or whether it's small I'm ready to go, ready to stay Ready my place to fill Ready for service, lowly or great Ready to do God's will the message behind this song okay. is clear. If you're a woman, then it's your job to cook, clean, and have babies. And that's about it, <laughs> as this is God's Damn. will and your sole purpose for existing. And while this ideology was certainly not as controversial at the time. I was just about to say that. The yeah, show the came time. out in the 80s. There was a clear, yeah. you know, representation, like in a couple of gender roles. The women mm -hmm. did this, the men, the men did this. So like, mm -hmm. I get it. Nowadays, obviously, it's controversial because, you know, it's 2024, you know, you basically can do whatever you want to do, get a job, own a house, whatever, whatever. Yep. Uh, okay, I mean, understandable for the time being. So far, I don't got a problem. Yeah, for sure. Okay. The show took it even further as it hammered home uh, this idea to all the children watching on by repeating one line at the end over and over again. Hmm. Trust and obey for there's no other way. Trust and obey. Making it clear that this was a lesson that the showrunners didn't want these kids to question. Mm -hmm. But as comically offensive as this song is, it was far from the worst that the show had to offer. Mm. It's time, it's time for our electric song. He's a friendly scientist, a real good friend. Bill Nye Design Guy? But how is he a scientist? In another scientist? episode, we're showing a musical number <gasps> about oh. Grandpa, who's- Right? How can he be a scientist if he's a man of God? You're right, because they don't believe in science. Yeah, I feel like he chose the wrong profession. But again, could be maybe he's trying to teach the kids that, I don't, I don't know, we'll see. That That's contradicting. Portrayed as a scientist that's always busy working, though the song is really less about him and more about his love interest. Oh. Cause he's in love with is that titties? <laughs> it is. Oh my god. Who's in love with a robot? A robot with long hair and nude female breasts. Uh, it's one of the most surreal things that I've ever seen on a kid show. Yeah, as this is, yeah, was clearly meant to be a portrayal of grandpa's wife and women in general, likening them to robots. Though unlike the oh, previous demeaning song, like this slaves? number is blatantly perverted. Oh, that's it not only shows the robot having breasts, but it also shows Grandpa fondling them as well. Oh, no. Nah. And these perversions oh. weren't even exclusive to its imagery. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, that's the pee pee. He wow. puts in his yeah, key. There's not no shit. man of God. <laughs> yeah, this, this boy wilding and swilling in the sheets. Yeah, okay, I can see it. I think on the basis, it is about religion, but I think the creator of uh, the show, I think he's mm -hmm. so deep into it that you know the way he thinks like how, how you said like the way he thinks about females is since they're robotic like that's yeah. a, like a slave like a to slave. them yeah, yeah. bro is so deep into it bro it's shocking for so many reasons but mainly due to the fact that this was on a show that was literally made for toddlers and young children who are now hey. being shown this clearly explicit content yeah and most disturbing of all is the realization that this sexualized material was actually nothing new to the world of life with grandpa oh, really so you've been doing it Oh, the puppets, there was a little known illustrated book series called Life of Grandpa, with the oh. show practically being a shot for shot remake of this book series, oh, featuring manga? the same exact characters and stories. <laughs> and much like the show, the series was also a religious guide created for children. In its pages, you'll find themes about morality and lessons made to guide you towards a proper way of living through this religion. Huh. But these books also had a very apparent dark side, one far worse than the show it inspired. Grandpa. In the chapter, Real Fathers, we're shown a scene where Techi and Davidito question why they have two different skin colors, Ooh. despite them being siblings, as Techi noticed that Davidito's skin appeared light brown, while hers was oh. almost pure white, oh. to which Grandpa then explains to them how his wife and their mother had slept with other men. Ooh. See, God- Uh, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't- I'm not- is this religion too? What's going on? Yeah. Oh, What's going on, Grandpa? I used Timothy mm. and Carlos only to fuck Mama so that I could have you both. What? They were just like an instrument or tool that Jesus used to help create you wonderful little children for his kingdom. Praise the Lord. What would he this put was that followed for by there? an in-depth explanation of what that scene looked like, including what? images depicting the act. What the? 
Examples like this are prevalent all throughout the pages of Life with Grandpa, with erotic material being shown constantly with no regard as to how inappropriate this is to be showing kids. Oh no. Which begs the obvious question. Ooh. Why? Are you reading why? that? Did you read any of that? Nah, I didn't read that one. What was that? Oh what no, they just no, they're actually just But why but are you why doing, are this, you for doing money? this for money? Because no, Tom for you, because I want to show you how much I really love you. Oh, the erotic no, material being shown constantly with no regard as to how inappropriate I never met a girl with so much love as you. You're so different from the others. Yo, grandpa! Oh. Oh, what? Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> if this is to be showing kids. Which begs the obvious question. Why? Why was life with grandpa so blatantly perverted? Well, the oh. answer lies with the author of the books and the um, reason for the show's existence. Huh. David Berg. He shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect. That's uh -huh. when Jesus is going to come back to rapture his saints, to gather them together. Born in 1919, David grew up a devout believer in Christianity, but wanted something more from the religion. He dreamed huh. of one day starting his own group with his own teachings. See? And in 1968, what? at the ripe age of 50, he decided it was time to do just that. He's literally grandpa. The group began in he Huntington like Beach, him. California, and went by many names over the years, like Teens for Christ, The Children of God, The Family of Love, The Family International, or just The Family. But regardless of its huh. name, there was no denying what this group was. A cult. They, a cult see? led by David. Mm. And, and the thing is, people follow him? Yes. Like, why? Yes, like, bro. That don't make no sense to me. Like, who is he? I don't know exactly how. Okay, so there's two ways that it could be done. So for children, it is the repetitiveness. You know, trust and obey. Tr right? Because because kids are sponges. They absorb everything. So if they're constantly getting that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, They'll, but it's easy with kids. I'm yes. talking about like adults. And then... So then this is the thing. I think with adults is you uh, attack their emotions or attack like you catch them at a vulnerable, vulnerable time in vulnerable. their life. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like if they're at their lowest, because they always say uh, people turn to God at their lowest. Well, yeah. maybe they might see, see him as, you know, a priest. So they turn to him mm. at their lowest. So then that's when it gets scary, bro, because you start manipulating niggas. Exactly. Man. Mm -mm. Berg would find young hippies and those struggling with drug addiction and Look. mental health issues and convince yep. them to join his group mm. by stating that the end of the world was coming soon and what? that they needed uh. to follow in his path and join his family to save their souls. What? It was pretty standard cult ideology, but at the time it was extremely effective, with a sect amassing a staggering 10,000 members at its peak. Damn. And at first, David got by with fairly standard teachings from the Bible, although this wouldn't last. Wow. After some time, Berg began addressing his followers via frequent illustrated messages called Mo Letters that, that featured his ramblings love. and teachings from the time, with Berg slowly ingraining into his members that the contents of these letters should be taken as seriously, if not more so, than the Bible. In this one of these letters in 1972, Berg claimed that God was going to destroy the United States and that the group needed to flee the country immediately, with what? Berg demanding that his followers spread out all across the globe and open up communal homes where members could live as one far away from the public eye. As a result, wow. many members packed up their things and left right away, leading what? to roughly 130 communities being established across 70 different countries, Damn. essentially wow. overnight. Wait, that's overnight? Wow, dude, they did not waste no time. <laughs> okay, yeah. oh, okay, so we know that this is gonna turn out bad or weird, but respectfully so, like, that's, that's aura, bro. Like, he... Yeah. That has a lot of control that this nigga has on them. I'm yeah. not gonna lie to Which you. Which is scary like, to give up your yeah. life just for this one guy. Yeah. Wow, okay. Mm. This mass migration had an extremely significant impact on the family as it left practically the entire group outside of the United States and more importantly, outside of the United States jurisdiction, meaning that Berg can now get away with far more than he used to. Oh. And unsurprisingly, this is where he began to tighten his control. <sighs> The full-time members were made to give up all of their earthly possessions to the group and cease all contact with their family and friends who were non-believers, cutting them off from the outside world completely. That's and these restrictions also applied to the media they consumed. I mean, TV ass anyway, but <laughs> fact. What the? In what his the? teachings, Berg denounced all forms of entertainment made outside of the cult, since he believed that this would poison the minds of his members and wow. potentially sway them into leaving the group. 
And wow. so instead, he insisted that his followers only consume media that was produced directly by the family, with these works often being created by Burke himself or the other followers he enlisted, and then hmm. shipped directly to the members' homes, huh. leading to hundreds if not thousands of videos, movies, and TV shows being produced and shared among the family. Oh my but for God. Burke, this wasn't just about providing entertainment. It was really all about controlling the minds of his group, yep. and even more importantly, indoctrination. Yeah. With his primary targets being the kids, children. Oh my. Yep. This From easy, birth, most kids but, um, were not shown any media other than what the cult gave their parents, with these works quite literally shaping their minds into following everything that the cult believed in without question. Yo. The main themes of these were usually things like always be happy. More than 70 little muscles for the proudly play. Only 14 muscles put a smile in its place. <laughs> Just smile, bro. Don't be sad. Always show love. <laughs> I mean, hey. smile. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is this shit, bro? Yo. I'll oh give it to him, God. though. Like, I don't know who's making this media, like these videos, but for back in the day, I guess this is pretty good. And for them to make it, you know, make so many, like constantly and stuff, dude, they would put it in work, bro. I mean, they got nothing else better to do. <laughs> <laughs> and never, under any circumstances, question your parents. Look at daddy says so. And life with grandpa was no exception, as it too was created by the family in order to instill their beliefs into its child viewers. With the line, trust and obey, being hammered home time and time again, as those mm. creating the programs didn't want their kids questioning any of the practices, and mm. so they were teaching them to simply smile along and trust the adults. Huh. But because the group was the one producing and distributing the content, they basically had no regulations placed on them, mm. meaning that they could include whatever they want in these shows without mm. any repercussions, mm. leading to many of the showrunners exploring some of the group's more controversial beliefs. Which becomes extremely troublesome when you realize that the family wasn't just your standard cult. And instead, it was hey, hey. a sex cult. Oh <laughs> my. When you think of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, what are you thinking about? You think about a beautiful naked man and a beautiful naked woman. And uh -huh. that is the first thing that a beautiful naked man and a beautiful naked woman would of course naturally do as soon as they saw each other and nobody else around. I think just one look was all it took. What the? Oh, now nah, you creepy. Bird was a deeply <laughs> perverted man. <laughs> the idea of sex consumed him and seeped its way into essentially all of his teachings. I think Adam and Eve are over there behind those bushes right now, busy making not pina colada. I think they're making some other kind of juices. And oh, once his followers right, were outside brother. of the US, he began to preach something he called the law of love, which essentially said that the family should be showing all people love, and that love should come in the form of sex. Hold on, uh, so, pause that right there. Yeah, no, I got you, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, incest. So, uh, <laughs> deep foreign babies. So, so, group looking at babies. So, so humpback looking at it. I don't know. So like though, no, like within the families or like no wait. I said everybody. Yeah, exactly. So we like you put no limit. Mm, I think he's doing that because he, yeah, he's instilling that beliefs, those beliefs in the in the families. So yeah. that and, yeah, it'll be everybody for anybody. So if you like someone or you love them, but the best way to do it is through. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, That's, bro. Yo, this guy, really, bro? Sick. Mm -hmm. I preach, boys and girls. What is it? Should be showing all people love, and that love should come in the form of sex. I practice what I preach, and I preach sex, boys and girls. Hallelujah. And so he told his followers to open up their relationships to outsiders, yes. calling the practice sharing as you were made to share your oh. partner in the hopes of enticing new people to join the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't satisfied with just this. And instead, he began to mandate that the women of the group participate in something he called Stop. flirty fishing. Also known as FF, flirty fishing describes the practice of women going into bars at night in order to pick up lonely men, who they would then entertain for the night. The goal of this was to convince these men to join the family, though more realistically, the goal was also to make money, as they were made to charge oh, yeah, for their services, the with the women being told to seek lonely businessmen. 
And yep. this is something that Berg not only pushed heavily, but outright mandated, insisting that every woman in the group do this or face being removed from the family. Why even those who were married? Shit. This is and Berg was evil. so serious about this that he sent every colony report forms so that they could report how much flirty fishing was being done Yo, in order to check their. No, he's so deep into their minds that like, th wow, people are actually doing this. Yep. Yo, look at these records. 297,000 what, men? I have no idea. Witness two souls one, 110,000 souls, maybe what, new members? Sure that they were up to par. Understandably, many women of the group were concerned by this and Good. wanted nothing to do with it. Good. However, most of them had moved all the way across the world and sacrificed all of their belongings to be in this group. Good. Meaning that their removal would leave them with- Oh, nothing. nothing. They were yep. trapped. Yep. Simply put, Berg was forcing the women of the group into prostitution. Fast. And he was shameless about it too, calling them God's whores and Christ's hookers. <gasps> what? But so worst you... of all, Berg knew that flirty fishing could put these women in grave danger. Brother, Yo. so the women that you want or that you, you know what I'm saying? You then make fun of them. You give them that name. Why would you call them whores? Hey, but he thinks it's a good thing for, for God. But like, it's really for him though. It's not for God. It's about him. He's just... <laughs> Manipulating them. Yeah, I, I hope people didn't do this because this is this is different. As he admitted to them that violent assaults were going to happen, but he said that if you want to live, simply don't resist. And if you do get hurt or even killed, that's entirely your fault. Because after all, it was God's will. And this was on top of a myriad of other horrific things that Berg said that I can't even repeat here. Damn. But the man saying all of these horrific things was the same man who wrote Life with Grandpa. And he used this medium to normalize his sex cult's beliefs for the children watching, uh -huh. which gives more context as to why women were portrayed in the way they were in these mm. books and the show. As Life with Grandpa was breaking down the young girls watching yeah. and grooming them for a life of prostitution huh. that they were made to accept without question. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. And Though the show wasn't only for preparing the kids for the perverse lifestyles they were headed for, and instead, what the? They were already becoming well accustomed to it. Huh? <gasps> um? There's nothing in the Throughout world. Throughout his mo letters, wait, wait, wait. also began to Stop. preach that there's nothing in the world at all wrong with sex as long as it's practiced in love. In love, no matter who or what age. Or oh, what yeah, relative or what look or I what relative that. or what manner I, I already knew that it was gonna be some pedos and it was gonna be some in the family keep it in the family resident evil type of genre like bro <laughs> i already knew that oh my god uh, and because wow. and because it started right when they were um young again yeah. they're sponges they absorb everything so like yeah to them it's like that's the right thing to do yeah, they're not gonna question it. Uh, huh? That's sick. That is sick. Yo, this man is wallin'. Children should be involved in these affairs and sharing as well. What? Stating that he believed age should have nothing to do with it. <clears throat> in fact, he believed that children should be taught about this lifestyle <clears throat> essentially as soon as they're born. <clears throat> and although, again, I can't read his exact words on this, Berg had declared open season on pedophilia, and much like flirty fishing. What did he just say? It's perfectly normal appetite like any other appetite. Why did the Lord make you able to have children at the age of 11, 12, and 13 if you weren't supposed to have blank then? Question my bro, bro. That logic is, is like brain dead. I'm not gonna lie, that Yo. logic is brain dead. I think that now, the person who clearly represents this dude now is Diddy. So Diddy is the reincarnation of this bozo, bro. <laughs> Yo. Do with it. In fact, he believed that children should be taught about this lifestyle essentially as soon as they're born. And although, again, I can't read his exact words on this, Berg had declared open season on pedophilia, and much like flirty fishing, it was mandatory. What? The abuse mm -hmm. that followed is unimaginable, at a scale far too large to fully know to this day. Abuse that the parents of the children not only allowed, but often participated in, oh. with one of the more notorious large-scale accounts coming from something that the group called the love video. What the? This movie Don't was a result of Berg sending out requests to all of the parents to send to him record? lewd videos of their children dancing, oh my, see, which he I not only it. took for himself, but packaged together into a long-form compilation video that oh, was then distributed the to all of port. the cult's members, encouraging the others to film similar content, with Did Berg you? going as far as creating a guide to help create the perfect video. What? And not only did many parents go along with this, 
but many clearly oh, so enjoyed it. Uh, oh, Gia shared with us the video that that just came from World Services, and it was so inspiring. It was so beautiful. Brain dead. Uh, the love video. And for this You're couple specifically, this wasn't the only order that they were happily following. And it was really a blessing too for Joe and Hobo uh, because they had a good chance to to share also with Sally. Amen. And uh, hey, the Lord's really. Really setting us freer and freer to to obey and to be free and and to show that that sample of freedom and love to the world. Oh, oh my yeah. God! Oh my brother! Yeah. He's so deep into it. His brain is gone, dude. Bro, oh, he's brain rot. Like he's brain <laughs> dead. Like this. Oh my God! But this I can't even watch this. It pissing me off. Not <laughs> that ass, bro. You look into his eyes and there's that little swirly thing. You know when you're um. Yeah, when you're in the trance. Yeah. yeah. And the way he speaks too. Yeah. And little. He's Bobby. like so. He's so sure of it too. Like he seems so confident about it too. Like this thing is bugging. Like smiling and everything. Talk about a blessing or whatever. Mm -mm. <sighs> I'm finna crash, bro. <laughs> Life with Grandpa was literally created to indoctrinate kids into a pedophilic sex cult. Facts. And it makes you realize why exactly it and so many other of the cult's programs were hammering home this point of not questioning your parents or any adults and to simply obey and smile. Yeah. So the right thing is to obey. Because the adults in their lives were now suddenly doing unimaginable things to them and they were being groomed not to question it, making some of the show's segments horrendous in hindsight. One very special way you can show the big people that you love them oh. is by giving them lots of the kiss. hugs, kisses, and yeah. cuddles. Oh, that's what she was referring to at the yeah. beginning. So yeah, setting them up. So, so, no, she's about to kiss him in the mouth. I think. Maybe. Look, 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 look. Oh. A child's love and affection oh. really encourages and inspires the big people. He was normalizing their abuse, and because of this, many children never questioned the horrible assaults that they endured. Assaults that were all fueled and pushed by David Berg's sick perversions. God created boys and girls able to have children by about the age of 12 years of age. My God, now he's gonna advocate child and sex. Yes. Which were far from theoretical, as Berg himself allegedly partook in this practice repeatedly uh, with his own children and stepchildren, what? as incest was also a key point of his teaching. Yeah. And his adult. You were right, yeah. bro. I, I know, bro. I know. Like, <laughs> you. I can't. Yo, what is wrong with him? Oh my God. Okay, so obviously when he said like this dude partook in it, I was like, well, of course. But then he mentioned his own family. I was like, what? What? Yeah, bro. <laughs> This nigga's sick. <laughs> Yo, he's a sick dude. <laughs> Theoretical, as Burke himself allegedly partook in this practice repeatedly with his own children and stepchildren, as incest was also a key point of his teachings. And his adult followers rarely dared to question this, as those who refused to partake in Burke's latest teachings were again at risk of removal from the group, which is even more devastating for those who had children, as much like all of their possessions, their kids were pledged and belonged to the family. Oh. And the kids themselves couldn't seek help either, as those that refused to trust and obey were sent away to actual prison camps owned by the cult until they were basically reprogrammed. Oh my. They made camps. I was sent with my brother to the Philippines. We had armed guards from the Filipino military keeping us in. They huh. would publicly beat you if you asked to leave. Damn. They tried to break you and get you to confess. And the group continuously got away with this too, oh. thanks in large part to Berg's orchestration of the group leaving the United States, which wow. looking back was almost certainly done on purpose. Plus, many members were actually living in hiding. In fact, all of the members were made to change their names upon joining the group. But and how most do you? To never... Bro, how? Like, they really gave him so much power. Like, this guy had so much power, bro. Yeah, he had, he had mad control over them. They are brain rot. Like, <laughs> couldn't be me. Like, <laughs> isn't that insane, though? Like, in different countries and, you know, to give up their belongings and give up their, yeah. even their names. You know, the, you know, like your name belongs to you. Like that's what categorizes you. Like that's who you are, right? Yeah. And he even took that from them. Yep. That's crazy. Give out their last names, meaning that if any child wanted to report the, that it happened to them, they would be unable to provide even the names of their abusers. And this included oh. Berg too, who oh. at this point lived most of his life in hiding going by numerous aliases to avoid detection. Oh. Aliases like King, Moses, Mo, what? Dad, and okay. eventually. 
grandpa. 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 Yeah, I knew he was grandpa. Bro, what a bum. I knew he was grandpa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, just like that weird ass nigga. The entire show was about him, David yeah. Berg, which is why he was shown as a wise, unquestioned religious-like figure mm -hmm. who the children were made to look up to. And that wasn't all, as the characters shown alongside Berg were also members of his real-life family. Oh my god, so in a remote commune. think about it. Okay. Those girls right here, it, they, he, he did the... Yeah, he used things with them. Yep. Oh my god, so now I see, like, why is it the darkest? kids mm -hmm. tv show i mean not well i've been saw it but i'm saying like yeah i get it okay damn mother maria was the nickname of karen zerby david's wife who helped him Ooh. run the cult and facilitate this era of hypersexualization while at oh, sarah, yeah, you need to get body. sarah kelly the woman in charge of running the prison camp made to punish the kids who dared question the family's oh, beliefs but. sarah yeah, you kelly need to get was responsible for me being held against my will in the philippines but the most grotesque wow. detail to come from the revelation of who these characters are was that it showcased david berg's polygamy as he was actually married to many people in the real world and two uh, characters <laughs> on the show itself uh -oh. mother maria and davida, davida his then five-year-old stepdaughter oh my god davida would eventually go on to tell her story stating that she had been berg's child bride and there was a ceremony with the ring and everything and once i turned five years old was when uh i was implicated into being one of his queens so to speak along with allegations Bro, that she had been victimized okay. by him countless times yeah. And she wasn't the only victim of Berg's perversion. Like Tetchi that. was often sexualized Shit. by Berg publicly, with Berg having stories made and illustrated depicting his fantasies about her. What? Grandpa, you're Wait, back. Thank and they're you, both, Pete. they're both, they're both no, yeah. no clothes, no clothes, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. When she was just a child. On top of this, numerous people within the group also claimed that she had been outright assaulted by the hands of Berg, as well as many others in the group. Uh. And look at our pretty, pretty girls today. You're dressed in such nice dresses and your hair looks so nice. Yes, you look so pretty for all the children that are watching today. The context of who these characters are makes this already disturbing show that yeah. much more sickening. Yeah. But of all of the horrible stories to come from the real life characters of Life with Grandpa, oh. there's one that is far and away the most horrific. Oh. The story of Davidito. Oh yeah. Okay, what's well, Davidito? Davidito oh. is such a handsome boy. Isn't he, girls? Would you like the oh, don't tell me he's gonna take his lessons? butt. Yes, Grandpa. Are you all ready? Okay, David. You have the floor. His real name oh, was Ricky Rodriguez. And as a baby, he was taken in as Berg's son, following Maria conceiving him with a man after a night of flirty fishing. And being wow. David's first son, he was given the nickname Davidito. As for David Berg, he viewed this child as essentially a messiah. He began telling his followers <clears throat> that Davidito would one day save them from the apocalypse, causing <clears throat> Davidito to become a celebrity within the group and worshipped as what? a religious figure when he was just a baby. Oh which my, explains why oh he was my. given so much airtime during Life with Grandpa oh, and why he was constantly favorite. being showered with gifts. We want to yeah. give you a little surprise because you were such a good witness. And for David and Karen, they wanted Davidito's life and childhood to be a guide for all members of the group, as they raised him in what they believed to be the perfect manner for a godly household. And so the couple and several other contributors documented the way he was raised, with daily journal entries that were published as weekly newsletters, and eventually oh turned into one massive book titled The Story of Davidito. And the family wow. truly believed that this over 700 page book was the ultimate guide what? for parenting and showed the only proper way to raise a child. Though what it actually showed was just how badly Davidito was being abused. Oh my! Davidito was described laying next to his new nannies, witnessing orgies involving his own mother and being touched <laughs> sexually by the adults around him. Hello? With these examples being presented through not only written stories, but actual photographs, with what? the adults involved having their faces removed and drawings placed over the top of them in order to hide their identities. Wow. The book was not only promoting acts with children, but it was outright showing it and showing it happened to Davidito. And because of this, we have a daily journal entry of all the abuse that this child suffered, oh. starting when he was an infant. Despite wow. all the heinous acts that had been going on within the family, they had up until this point gone virtually unchecked by the public eye. But the story of Davidito- Yo, bro, I'm like, okay, I gotta give it to Nick Crowley over here, bro, because the way he presented the show, right? Yeah. Uh, besides the ominous soundtrack and the way he was talking, like, I knew something was bound to happen, but at the beginning, yeah. you remember I was saying, oh, it's not bad, it's okay, it's okay. Bro. So far, yeah. Son, this went from okay to the absolute worst of the worst. It just kept getting worse 
and worse and worse and worse. I'm just like, bro, what the fuck am I? <laughs> nah, dead ass. And I like how he um introduce the characters introduce the show but then kind of yeah. like you you know he didn't give you too much at the beginning and kind of all tied mm -hmm. it back mm -hmm. and it's like damn that thing that i was thinking about at the beginning of how you know it wasn't bad look was how okay. bad it actually is yeah because you start piecing the puzzles together mm. so yeah bro. yo nah, this guy's nice very very good storytelling they had up until this point gone virtually unchecked by the public eye but the story of davidito would prove to be the first domino to fall as the mm. book leaked to the press. Oh, mm. the, the press. Children of God, founded by Moses David Berg, he reportedly sanctioned sex among children. This what? immediately became a new story all across the world, and it began mm. shining a light on the family and its twisted beliefs. But despite all the constant news coverage and the story of Davidito being tangible proof of the cult's horrible practices, there was still essentially nothing done to stop them as mm. very few arrests were ever made as a result, and even fewer resulted in convictions. Oh, that's So nothing true. was ever done to help Davidito. Yeah, think about it because they don't have their names. It's not their actual names. Yeah. Um, They don't know where they live. They're in hiding. Yep. They don't have, yep. they don't interact with uh, technology. Yep. Nah, this guy is a it's mastermind. Like He's like the a villain. That, uh, uh. Yeah, he planned this shit strategically so well yes. that like, I don't know, bro. Like he he really planned, he put thought into this shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Bro. Yeah, like each step was like calculated in a sense. Like mm -hmm. each step had mm -hmm. a reasoning behind it, technically. Yep. Wow. Yep. And so during his entire childhood and his early adult years, he stayed with the group. Though the older he got, the more he began to see the family for what they really were. And <laughs> yeah, the constant I bet. pain that he was experiencing eventually made him want to just run away from it all. I bet. And so, in 1999, that's exactly what he did. Fleeing to the United States in the hopes of starting a new life. Mm. Though this was easier said than done. Oh my and god! No amount of distance Yo, look at the car! Keep... Yeah, that car looked crazy. One, two, you trying to fit all that stuff in there? Uh, Why do I need that's... a U-Haul truck for? I just need one of those. Oh, hell no, that shit falling off your car, gang. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. That. <laughs> Holy. Nine, that's exactly. Oh. Nine. That's exactly what he did. Fleeing to the United States in the hopes of starting a new life. Though this was easier said than done. And no amount of distance was enough to keep him away from his tortured past. What happened? At one point during his time in the United States, Ricky actually opened up about the struggles he was experiencing on a website made for survivors of the family. And wow. there, he documented just how bad things really were for him and several others behind the scenes, Holy. living with Berg, appropriately titling the post, Life with Grandpa. Huh. It was apparent that he was haunted by this life that he tried to escape, as the trauma was an everyday cycle of hell. Of course, yeah, I just bet. couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, I bet. Do you know that sometimes the Lord likes to test our faith, to teach us patience, and to really make us pray? This is just what happened to me once, once, once. Huh. Yeah, my man's traumatized. Whoa, 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 Wait. whoa. Well, hey, everyone. He's gonna blick himself? I want people to know that even though um, some of the things that I'm gonna try to do are rather shocking. What? And, He's gonna blick people? Um, maybe not right in a lot of people's books. Oh, I want man. to explain some of the reasons behind it. On January 7th, 2005, people. Ricky Rodriguez set up a video camera in his apartment and expressed his desire to kill his mother and other leaders of the group for oh. all the dreadful things that they had done not only to him, but to all the other children, oh. with his hope being that this would finally bring down the family once and for all. Oh my god! My goal is to get those sick bucks while I'm Peter, and um, you know, then I can go to the next life knowing that, um, you know, that I made a difference. With Ricky going as far as to show off the various ways that he planned on torturing them. What? Oh, no. I have to make do. I got my drill here. What the? Got lots of fucking duct tape. God, no, yes. you know he's at the brink of, like, this is it. Because he's showing all this with a smile on his face and with no, uh, I guess, no remorse in a sense. Like, you said, like, he's, he's, yeah. he sounds very calm. He's like, yeah, I'm going to use this. Yeah, he's like joking about it, but it's like he's so traumatized, he's not right in the brain, obviously. Yeah, this thing is fucked up in the brain. So, <laughs> yeah, bro. Holy, yeah. he hears, he cares, he loves his girls and boys, he gives his very best to Taser? Yo, where he he get get his from? Is the toys. 
he finna violate them if he gets a chance to. By this point, David Burke had been dead for years, though the family oh. carried on with his mother, Karen Zerby, assuming full control, which wow. explains why she was the primary target. Oh, she's Much like Burke, oh. Karen spent most of her life in hiding, with Ricky being unable to track her down, though he was able to find Angela Smith one of the Ooh. nannies responsible for raising him, oh my. as well as one of his most prominent abusers, as she was even GG. shown in the story of Davidito as him. GG. At this point, Ricky was exhausted, and Angela was his last shot at getting intel to help him find his mother so and finally he... carry through on his plans. And so, he invited her over for dinner Yo, under the guise on a of mission. the group. I went home that night and tried to wait patiently for the next day. But the Lord still had more lessons that he wanted to teach me. This is what happened. Uh-oh. She... Before Ricky could even get the information he was looking for, something in him snapped. And midway through their conversation, Ricky it. grabbed a knife and stabbed Karen in the arm. GG. And then slit her throat. Oh GG. my. He fled the area that night, driving for hours until he reached California, the place that years before David Burke had started the family. There, he called his ex wife, professing to everything he did, saying that he did it mainly for his sister Techie, but he felt no better. In fact, he felt worse. Yeah. And even looking back at the video, it's very obvious that this was something that Ricky didn't truly want to do, and instead, he felt like he had to do it to avenge everyone. Yeah, that the family yeah, hurt. yeah, yeah. I'm not trying sure to play I hero. I don't want to fucking do this. Huh. God damn it. And it was too huh. late to take back what he did. And so he stopped the car in a dark parking lot, sat he there for a moment, himself? thinking about everything that had happened during his painful life, and ended his suffering once and By for smoking. all. Uh, yeah, I already knew that. Was uh, oh, yeah. what these fuckers have done to us. They don't, didn't actually, you know, grab a knife and cut us up, but man, they sure fucked up our brains. That's the way yeah. it was it. Grandpa and Mama's house. Literally or figuratively, they're going down. So, with that happy thought, I shall leave you. Damn, I feel bad for him. I know, yeah. Damn, what the? And then all the members come out of hiding. Ricky Rodriguez's death was Holy! devastating for the community of survivors <laughs> of the family, and it caused shockwaves all throughout the family itself as his final video was plastered all over the news. And though it didn't happen in the way he expected it or wanted it to, Ricky's life and death undoubtedly contributed to the decline of the family and helped mm. diminish the cycle of abuse within the group. Starting from the story of Davidito, the public pressure forced Berg to outlaw the widespread abuse that he once preached. And though it is believed that it never really came to an end, it was at the very least significantly reduced. Yeah, and I by mean, the time the news began to cover done, Ricky's death, least. it proved to be the final wake-up call for many still within the group as they finally began to see through the facade that had once controlled their lives. Wait, hold on, pause that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, bro. It's funny because um, the grandpa dude was trying to raise his son to be like the Messiah. Technically, he kind of was in a way of his death had to be like a, an example for the other people to realize this shit is a scam. Mm. It kind of like, I don't know, shot him in the face because he was trying to like perceive what he was doing through his child. But yeah. then again, it backfired and then boom, now everybody's waking up. Yeah, I also find it ironic how like the book was about raising, you know, the perfect way to raise a child and then look yeah. what happened at the end. So <laughs> yeah. how how goofy is that? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. When we pray, things will happen and things will be different. Mm. It's difficult to watch any of Life with Grandpa, knowing its history, its purpose, and the real people that it was inspired by. Though as soon as the media began taking notice of the cult, many members were made to purge the media that was sent to them that may mm. be considered incriminating. And as a result, it appears that most of Life with Grandpa is missing to this day, mm. and potentially destroyed forever. Mm. Currently, only four episodes have been recovered, and it's not even known how many more were released, or True. even what year the show started or ended. But considering how closely the show mirrored the book, it's possible that these potentially missing and destroyed episodes are much worse than the ones we have today. Huh. But despite not knowing the full extent of the show, it's clear that Life with Grandpa and the countless other programs that the family made did exactly what they wanted them to. Yeah. They brainwashed an entire generation of the cult's children, yep. and the effects were devastating. Mm -hmm. But they become extremely agitated when we ask them about Moses David Berg's teachings on sex. My Little Fish. Now, your father described that as a routine publication. They're not having sex, they're just kissing and hugging in bed. 
That's not sex. If you show it to other people, they don't understand. That stuff's not supposed to be publicized. So many people hate. So many people think sex is wrong. So many people hate us. But we just telling them the truth. We're just telling them it's not. You can't wrong. hate these kids. You can't hate these kids, bro. Everything that happened to them is not their fault. Um, of course not. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I mean, people are stupid anyways. They're going to judge regardless. So I mean, yeah, but it's crazy how much you can hear how much belief she has in this. Yeah. Like, it's so crazy. Like, she's on the verge of tearing up. Like, that's crazy. Exactly. And she's telling other people like, oh, no, they don't understand. Like, that's not what it is. Like, it's this instead. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. Between the strange content yeah. from the program itself, its obvious attempts at indoctrinating kids into a cult that was only ever going to harm them, the real-life people behind the characters, and the fact that this propaganda was so effective, I have no doubt that Life with Grandpa is the darkest children's show that I've ever come Fa across. No, facts. Yeah, so How did you shocking. even I find this? There's somehow one more layer to the story what? that makes what? this program even more disturbing. It gets, it gets worse? How? What the hell is Peter and Puppet? Here's the exciting ending to this story. One thing that we haven't discussed yet is who was actually the one behind the creation of the show. There's no oh. doubt that it's David Berg's stories and was probably done at his request, but who okay. is the one actually making it? Well, unfortunately, most of the people who worked on the show have their identities hidden by only using their first names, or even mm. using straight-up aliases, so I could hardly mm. find any information on any of them, mm. with the exception of one, <laughs> Peter Puppet. Peter Puppet was sort of a celebrity within the group, being responsible for numerous puppet shows, including one called The Lovettes, the lovettes, the lovettes the which was actually mm. far more popular than Life with Grandpa, and what was the? even supposedly broadcast on TV in the Philippines, oh. with the show being a disturbing rabbit hole in its own right. Would you like to hear a story? Well then let's go see Grandpa in the garden. Hello, children! So nice of you to visit us in the garden today. But Peter Puppet owned this group and was in charge of the Lovettes team. And coincidentally, what was that? Is the video is that your dog? No, nah, that was my dog. I think my girl just came home, but it's all good though. All right. The Lovettes just so happened to be credited as the producers of Life with Grandpa. So Peter Puppet was, at the very least, one of the contributing creators of the show. And he also seems to be the one in charge of performing the actual musical numbers on the show, as they featured oh. puppets that belonged to Peter and the Lovettes team, with these segments interestingly being credited to an unknown man named Peter Pioneer. We have a beautiful song from Peter Pioneer. It's not a concrete link, but it's clear that Peter Puppet had a role in the show's creation, and helped push the family's disturbed ideology onto hundreds of kids across the globe. But during the creation of Life with Grandpa, it seems his own beliefs were being tested. In the beginning of the video, we saw an example of the family's view on doctors. Surely a doctor would have stitched it, but our yeah. God is still a God of miracles. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this sentiment was really common in the family, as Berg outright forbade any medicine or surgeries of any kind, instead what? preaching that miracles from God were the only way to heal. And what? because of this, many members yeah. of the family with chronic ailments or fatal illnesses were basically Died. left to die. Oh my. And one of those left suffering was Peter Puppet. Oh, His ironic. life is almost entirely a mystery, what? as he lived in hiding in one of the family's compounds. But according to some of the group's members, one day he noticed something in his oh. neck. A he got cancer? Lung. And over he the next cancer. few weeks and months, it began to slowly get bigger and bigger, to the point yep. that Peter had to go visit a doctor in order to see what was wrong. Brother, you're mm. cooked! And it was there he learned that inside of him was an aggressive tumor that yeah. was only going oh, to get larger. Yeah, a tumor, the good yeah. news was, the tumor was actually <laughs> yeah, operable tumor, yeah. and could be removed with little risk to his life. Oh. But the bad news was, surgeries were against the family's beliefs. Oh my! Wow. So he turned it down, instead opting I to go back to the compound sped. and pray the tumor away with the other members. Sped. This, however, never happened. Instead, the mass began to grow at an even faster rate, to the point that those around him could notice it, eventually leading to Peter hiding away in his room, away from the <laughs> others, not wanting to be seen. He probably looked like a However, at some point during his struggle, Maybe. a photograph was taken, showing the entire compound he was living with. Oh. And oh in my. the background, look at him! We see top left Peter. Ew! Whose neck is 
impossibly large. He looked deformed. From here, it's said that Peter began to beg the family to take him to get the surgery, as the tumor was quite literally suffocating him slowly, you, you, turning him against the very beliefs that he once forced upon so many children over the oh years. My. But the family forbade it, insisting that he wait for a miracle Good. that was never going to come. Good. <laughs> With nowhere else to turn, Peter Puppet supposedly ended his own life shortly after this photograph was taken, oh. adding the final pillar of context to Life with Grandpa, a program that can only be described as the darkest children's show ever created. Bro, that's no, this so guy cooked with this video. Kids. Yeah. I got you. Come on, say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Shut bye -bye. up. Shut your ass up. No. This video was insane, dude. Bro, this is a 10 out of 10. This. Bro, this is more than a 10 out of 10. This is a freaking 20 out of 10 or whatever. Is this this dude singing? Man, shut that shit up. Are we done here? I don't want to... David Berg like died of natural causes. 1995. Never convicted of a single crime. <laughs> I mean... It was too late when they found out, I think. Mm -hmm. Karen Zerby continues her husband's legacy by leading the family to this day. Oh no. She has not been photographed or seen publicly since 2010. She need to get off this earth too, I ain't gonna lie. Sarah Kelly left the family and went into hiding. Oh. Huh. She has last seen living in Costa Rica in 2018 working with Seeds of Hope. A charity specialist in helping vulnerable women and children. Oh, oh, okay. So you moved on to help people that are basically in the same situation you were in. Okay, that's cool. Mm. Upon learning of her true identity, Seeds of Hope severed ties with her and she has never been seen again. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they said, get out of here, coach. Back to my father and home. Mm -hmm. Why should I perish? Tetchy would later speak out against what her brother did, claiming that no abuse ever took place and that Ricky was simply disturbed. Uh, oh no. Wow. Due to the stat, statute, statute of limitations that many victims of the family I never received the justice they deserve. The family continues operations to rules against the abuse of children. Oh, wow. Wait, what? Continues his operation with strict rules against the abuse of children. Oh, but they keep David Berg's teachings. That whole shit's still fucked up. They need to disband that. Like, what's yeah. Going? Like, come on, man. They never disavowed it, so I'm assuming some of it is still present. Allowed. Yeah, allowed, yeah. I don't know why they still follow this dude. That's crazy. Yo, bro. Yo, my brother Nick yeah. Crowley. 10 out of 10, bro. Yeah, you did your fucking big one. I ain't gonna lie, son. Brother, this, I know this took a lot of research yes. and a lot of time. Bro, you did your big one. I ain't gonna lie. I agree 100%. I feel like the research aspect and then to put it on a video so yeah. well, like, written. You know, written to the point where, yeah, it feels like such a good story with a beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like the way it portrays it at the beginning, it makes you say, oh, this is not bad. And then yeah. slowly and slowly, you deadass learn of why it's so creepy and bad. And then mm -hmm. each character connects each other. And other. I'm like, what? like, bro, this was insane. Yeah, that's, yeah man. <sighs> if y'all like videos, like it. You can't like videos, not like, oh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, fuck. You know and remember, saying? don't ever join a cult, bro. Okay. Hey, you know. Hey, the thing is, they might not even know it's a cult because it'll be too late. True. Oh yeah, true. 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 Yeah, <laughs> true. Especially if you're young, like. Damn, yeah. bro. Hey, this mm -hmm. is why you got to take a step back and reflect on life, you know, and ask questions. You got to question everything. Exactly. Question everything. And do it. And if you can't do it, like, you know, they say don't question an adult. All right. So go in your room and then question it in your head and see if it makes sense. <laughs> and if it don't yeah. make sense to you, hey. You know, you it's could. <laughs> it's it oh. All right. Yeah. See y'all tomorrow, man. Holla at your boy. Yeah, man. <laughs>